During World War II, Nicholas Stephen Alkamade was a British tailgunner in the Royal Air Force, or RAF for short. 21-year-old Alkamade was part of a crew that flew an Avro Lancaster Mark II bomber, which was capable of carrying the largest bombs used by the RAF during the Second World War. These bombers often flew night missions, and Alkamade and his crew nicknamed it Werewolf. Alkamade flew 14 successful missions with the crew of Werewolf, but things changed on the night of March 24, 1944. On that night, they were part of a bombing raid targeting Berlin. Werewolf carried her seven crew members and was one of 811 aircrafts destined to attack the German capital. They successfully delivered their payload, but on the way back, heavy winds took them off course. They ended up flying over the Ruhr region, which had a high concentration of anti-aircraft defenses. Shortly before midnight on March 24th, a Junkers Ju-88 night fighter intercepted Werewolf and attacked from beneath with cannons and machine guns. Werewolf's starboard wing and fuselage were shredded and erupted into flames. The pilot ordered the crew to grab their parachutes in preparation for an emergency exit from the burning aircraft. Alone in his turret at the back of the plane, Alkamade was already being scorched by the flames, with his rubber oxygen mask beginning to melt on his face and his arms seared by the fire. When he finally found his parachute, it was on fire, just like everything else around him. Faced with the choice of burning or falling to his death, he chose to jump out of the burning aircraft. He jumped from the burning plane without his parachute, falling at almost 120 miles per hour and losing consciousness on the way down. He woke up three hours later, lying in deep snow in a pine forest. He didn't break any bones, but sprained his knee after his 18,000-foot fall from the sky. In addition, he suffered burn wounds from the fire and had pieces of perspex from his flak-shattered screen embedded in his skin. Although he survived the fall, surviving the rest of the night wasn't a guarantee. His knee was in too much pain for him, and the freezing cold began taking a toll on his body. He began blowing his distress whistle, which attracted the attention of some German civilians. He was taken to Meshade Hospital, where his wounds were treated, and when he was well enough to talk, he was interrogated by the Gestapo. He told them his story, but they refused to believe he survived the fall. They thought that he had buried his parachute somewhere, and that he was a spy. When they sent men to investigate the landing site, as well as the wreckage of the werewolf, they found that the remains of Alchemade's parachute were still in the wreckage of the plane. He was sent to the north compound of the notorious prison camp Stalag Luft III, and was given prisoner number 41765. He was a celebrated prisoner of war, but it didn't earn him any special treatment. The camp's 10,000 inmates were forced to trek hundreds of miles across northern Germany through a blizzard with temperatures dropping as low as minus 22 degrees Celsius. The long march, as these evacuations are now collectively known, claimed the lives of hundreds of men, but Alkamade survived and was eventually liberated in May 1945. He worked in the chemical industry after the war, where he would yet again cheat death. While removing chlorine gas generating liquid from a sump, he received a severe electric shock from the equipment he was using. His gas mask became dislodged, and he began breathing in the poisonous gas. An agonizing 15 minutes passed before he was dragged to safety, nearly asphyxiated by the fumes. Not long after, a siphoning pipe burst, spraying Alchemade's face and arms with industrial sulfuric acid. He dived headfirst into a nearby 40-gallon drum of lime wash, thereby neutralizing the acid. Returning to work, Alchemade was pinned beneath a nine-foot-long steel door runner that fell from its mountings as he passed by, somehow only suffering minor bruising. On June 22, 1987, Alchemade died at the age of 64 in Liskeard, Cornwall. Unlike other fabricated stories of people cheating deaths numerous times, Alchemade's story has been fact-checked, and he has one of the most insane life stories out there.